This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Mino Studio is a pre- and post-production facility for all of your audio needs. Mino Studio's founder is an accredited audio engineer with top 40 and in indie album credits. With over 30 years of music industry experience, Mino Studio can take your podcast from idea to reality. Contact Mino Studio at Mino Studio 777 at gmail.com for more information. That's Mino Studio spelled M E N O, Mino Studio 777 at gmail.com. In a world where jobs are how most people make money, one man. One desire, one challenge, dares to break the mold. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where we don't work for money. Money works for us. Coming soon, viewer discretion advised. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice, so you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manasseh. We've got a great show for you today. I am real excited to have the MC Lobshaw here. And he is, uh, uh, well, I, I don't know any other way to, to, to say, he's a, he's a cash flow ninja. And everybody that listens to this show knows that we're all about cash flow. And uh, so this is going to be a fun guy to listen to. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of great content for you. But he is the president and chief wealth strategist of Valhalla Wealth Financial and the host of a popular business and investing podcast of which uh, I believe I'm a subscriber, Cash Flow Ninja. So welcome, MC. Hammer time. How are you doing today? Doing fantastic, Bill. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm honored to be here. Oh, well, we're excited and honored to have you on. Um, this is going to be a great uh, show. I, I would, uh, I, I didn't say a lot in the introduction, so I'm expecting you to kind of follow up here and uh, give me a brief bio and, and how you became the cash flow ninja. Yeah, so I'm originally from South Africa. I grew up outside of a small town on a small holding in Stellenbosch, which is about 45 minutes outside of Cape Town on the southern tip of Africa. And uh, when I graduated university, I uh, grabbed a backpack, a suitcase, uh, about $500, a sense of humor and a sense of adventure and traveled a little bit. And uh, I ended up in the United States playing in a competitive uh, rugby league over here. There was a city-based league, and I ended up playing represent representative rugby. And while I was playing representative rugby, I actually found my feet in real estate. So my background was in real estate. I started um, – I did everything from, uh, from maintenance to turning over apartments to uh, structuring leases, lease agreements, marketing, uh, showing the units, uh, doing the books, uh, dealing with outside contractors, and then eventually got my broker's license, became part of an acquisitions team. So I developed a lot of that, uh, those skill sets uh, while I was uh, playing sports and, and rugby. Um, I spent some time on the sales part of it. And um, a couple of years ago, um, created my own wealth management firm, uh, Valhalla Wealth Financial, uh, where we help individuals, families, entrepreneurs, investors, small business owners build their wealth outside of Wall Street. And then I'm also, as you mentioned, uh, the host of the Cashflow Ninja podcast. Um, on the show, we challenge 
societal beliefs around the concept of money, uh, savings, investing, speculating, the idea of retirement. And we have a lot of folks on the show and guests that talk about how to create income streams and cash flow ranging from everything from real estate to music royalties to even uh, coffee offshore. Really? Wow. Wow. That's fascinating. Well, our audience, as you probably know, is I'm very much uh, concerned about uh, and uh, very interested in anything that can help them to preserve wealth and to grow wealth. Many of them are either approaching at retirement or already in retirement. And uh, yeah, I, I would really be interested in kind of hearing, um, you know, what what brought you into this area and and. Uh, what was sort of your, your light bulb moment, so to speak, where you realized, gee, this is really where I want to be. I mean, you're playing rugby. You probably could have gone professional. You could have done a lot of different things. Um, but uh, obviously, you got your, your interest into this wealth management. Maybe you can expand a little bit on that. Yeah. So uh, I, like some of your listeners may have, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Join and- the club. Yeah, so I did that actually um, in the first year out of university and was really inspired, expanded my my mindset and uh, my context of just how I look at everything and approach everything. Um, I studied then a lot into real estate. As I mentioned, I ended up moving, going in there, but I purchased my first property the first year I was out of university. And that was the book that kind of started that spark of how I realized and looked at everything and said, well, you know, there's, there's basically two paths that you can go down. And, um, the cash flow path was definitely something that I was interested in. And in my firm, especially, um, you talk about aha moments. There's, there's a, there's many, but I'll share, I'll share one with you too. Um, in my firm, I work with, with a lot of, a uh, lot of cli- clients of mine and we look and reposition assets so that they can have more control over their wealth plan. Uh, they can have safety of capital and be as economically efficient as possible with as regard to taxes, fees, and interest paid to third parties. And one thing that I realized after working with a number of clients is the clients that um, are that are, are approaching retirement that are really, really set and will have uh, a very, very fruitful retirement that they that they envision for themselves. We're clients of mine that focused on creating and building assets and income streams and have cash flow sources every month coming in. And a lot of my clients that were not in the position that they that they wanted to be um, and and are probably going to struggle to have that retirement and later part of their life that they envisioned. They focused on the accumulation theory, and that was the, the obviously the big thing uh, that that that's out in society. The uh, accumulation approach, where we save money, we save money, we save money, we put it away, and eventually, through the later parts of our lives, we just start withdrawing it and withdrawing it. The problem is we are all living a much longer, which is fan- amazing. There's amazing technologies out there, so um, we're gonna, and obviously through inflation, money that we saved is lost some purchasing power. So there's a lot of problems with that. Uh, Clients of mine and people out there that focus on income streams that will provide consistent uh, income on a monthly basis for them. That's actually the, the real security, in my opinion, in the future and in this exciting time that that we're in. Yeah, I think that that's, uh, that's great that one of the things that I I, I feel that most people don't know is, you know, that, that when you're real estate investing is just sort of one avenue to generate cash flow and that managing your money effectively can also generate capital. A lot of people don't know that, you know, that Robert Kiyosaki, um, yeah, everybody equates him with real estate, but uh, he's an avid investor. He he uh, in, in, uh, invests in businesses, yeah, the stock market, uh, various various other areas that he's involved in in terms of generating cash flow. So, uh, I think managing what you do have, what your assets are, uh, effectively uh, is an important part of that that whole mix. Uh, so when you generate the cash flow, what do you do with the cash flow is is a, a, a big question. Um, I, and 
in terms of getting started, as we all do, we we encounter um, as you're growing, say, your own business and growing um, your own uh, assets. What uh, was sort of one of the big uh, uh, mistakes that that really uh, taught you an effective way to better manage your your funds? Yeah, I think, well, boy, I learn every day <laughs> um, and I learn something new to try and try to learn something new every day to make myself better in all areas of my life. But I think especially when it when it came to the real estate, one of the biggest mistakes that that I made was not in knowing the, my operations inside and out. I purchased my first property and basically handed it off to a property manager right away without knowing all the ins and outs. And I saw some of the similar mistakes made um, in, in while I went into real estate as well. So that's a, that's a very big, big lesson. So every investment that I look at, I try to learn the ins and outs of everything. So, um, and especially in my own business, uh, the moving parts of it, I try to I try to learn everything I possibly can about that business and then hand it off to to a, a partner or a vendor. Um, so I think that was one of the biggest things that I that I've that I learned over time. And uh, along with that, what would you say was uh, uh, the, your biggest success where you um, you did something and boom, you know, it worked just the way you wanted? Um, yeah, I think. The company that that I'm trying to build, and and I learn, <laughs> this is you know it's coming along really nicely, along really nicely, and I have to say you know one of the things that that I learned from that is there's someone that I you know uh, another personality that I followed for a while that sent something really important that really like that was a aha moment that had my business turning a different direction, and he said that in the information age. And the, the where we live now, you're a media company first before you are in the business that you're in. And I thought to myself, hmm, that's a very interesting statement. And, I, you know, looking at what he was trying to say at that point, you know, just with the information that, that we're in, we're a media company in terms of the information that we put out there through our blogs, our podcasts, the videos that we put, put on face, Facebook, uh, on YouTube, and the the new way in the information age, because there's so much information, is we have to try and provide as much value as humanly possible for others and put it out there. And that's how they're going to find you. That's how they're going to reason with you uh, or resonate with you. Um, and be, follow you and eventually those people that that resonate with you and that like what your message and like what you have to say will become clients and customers so i think that you know even if you're if even if you're selling shoes the the amount of information that you put out about shoes out there is very important because it's <laughs> there's so many shoe manufacturers out there so how do you differentiate differentiate yourself so i think one of the aspects where i had a lot of success was the when i started looking at my business and my company that we're here to provide as much value and share information because we're a media company first out there um, it kind of turned a different way and uh, that we've 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 grown ever since. I think that's that's a great lesson. In fact, it's something me uh, as a old dog, uh, I'm you know, kind of learning the uh, the hard way, even though you know, I was uh, I think as soon as computers were out there, I, I think I had you know, one of the one of the first uh, IBMs, you know, the big clunky boxes that used to <laughs> take up, you know, half your desk. Um, and then there was a, a laptop I got. It was ca called a K-Pro, which is, a um, you know, sort of the, one of the first laptops sat on your lap. But, you know, it heat up and you know, your lap would, <laughs> you know, got a little hot for the lap, but it, it worked, you know. But even with all that, uh, it, everything has happened so fast, social media and, and all these other areas where um, there are certain media uh, 
that are just disappearing like newspapers that uh, used to be the prime. Yeah, I remember when I had my advertising agency, you know, that's, th that was the one of the prime way to get a message out is to the newspapers and through magazines. Well, you know, those things are going away and, and now there's a whole different media and it's all, you know, on your, on your computer screen, on your phone, on your iPad, um, your Apple watch and what have you. And it's, uh, it's something that understanding that um, you can better be effective in whatever endeavor you have out there. And, and as a real estate investor, you know, I look at things like tenant marketing and that's an area that uh, I've taken a great deal of int interest in. And, and how do you reach those potential tenants that you want to get besides just putting a, a sign in front of your building? You know, what can you utilize out there uh, in media to be able to draw in exactly the, the target audience you really want to rent your, your units? That's great that you learned how to do that effectively, because that is a, an area I think all of us had to have to spend more time in. Yeah, and and it doesn't it doesn't happen the first time. I think I spent quite a while to figure it out because, as you mentioned, Bill, there there's just so many sources. So I think one of the other things that I did too is I is I just picked uh, basically two channels uh, on uh, as far as social media and put all of my focus in there and try to master them. I started obviously with the one um, and try to master that one before I moved on to the other one. Um, because, uh, y you know, you have to learn the ins and outs of all of them. And there's just so many of them and you have to go where, again, your target audience is and where the, the people and, and few, the, the prospects and your customers and your clients are and where they will find you. What were the two channels just out of curiosity that you chose? Yeah. So I found that for my, my business, that, that Twitter actually worked really well. Mm -hmm. And Instagram worked really well. Oh, excellent. So excellent. Tw great. Twitter is, is uh, you know, I, I looked at it too. I got a lot of my news from that because it's just so easy to follow a couple of news organizations. And as stories break, well, they're all together right there in your, tw in your Twitter feed. So I started looking closely at that and uh, discovered a, <laughs> a whole new world. You know, it's if when you try and learn one of those, you, I didn't know half the things that, that I knew you could even do with it. Um, it's become pretty effective to get my message out there. Instagram is is great uh people love pictures they love um motivational quotes they love uh you know they 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 are captivated by certain pictures um i know i certainly am so those have been great avenues for me and you know i don't know if this is an area that you you've looked at or not but I, obviously those two are also um cash flow generators as well uh, people that have uh, a large number of followers are, are able to do um, advertising and other things to be able to generate income through um, through those avenues as well. Very much so. Um, Twitter is very powerful that way. Instagram is the same. The same with Facebook. Facebook is unbelievable targeting, and you actually can create uh, advertisements for your Instagram through Facebook. But yeah, no, it's so true. And actually, since we're on the topic of cash flow, there, there's another avenue right there where through affiliate marketing, um, there are some people generating really nice income streams from uh, those uh, those channels. Yeah, it's true. It's amazing. I mean, there are young kids uh, that are, you know, that have these like, like even a YouTube channel, you know, and they're making thousands and thousands of dollars a month, you know, just, just through their affiliate uh, sponsorships and advertising. And uh, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy out there. It's just a whole, a whole new avenue out there. Yeah. And, and in the information I do, we live in such an exciting time and you know, I, I am a lifelong learner and I know that moving forward, we're going to have to be lifelong learners because things are changing so quickly and there's going to be a lot of things becoming obsolete very quickly. We've even seen, you know, the disruptors in certain industries, they're going to be disrupted by a new set of disruptors. So just look at companies like Uber and Airbnb, etc. And I think there's just going to be more and more of them, them coming out there with 
with this platform of the internet. And as far as an online business um, through affiliate marketing or YouTube, as you've mentioned, you, you know, you look at how you can scale a business. I mean, the the sky is literally the limit. <laughs> you can you can service an unlimited amount of people around the planet through your uh, platform on your website or social media. It, it's quite incredible. Yeah, it fascinates me. It's just, it's just uh, one of those areas out there that you you just don't even have a concept of until you really kind of dig in there and look at what people are actually doing just online. It's amazing. Well, we have a, you know, a lot of folks that are listening that are um, 50 plusers like me that uh, um, so they may be real skilled in social media. They may not. and uh, But they're looking at, you know, other ways of generating income and cash flow. And, and I thought maybe you could just share a little bit about uh, what, you know, what you've done and what you're doing and, and how that's helping people to achieve that goal. Yeah. So with my firm, Valala Wealth Financial, um, we help individuals and families and small businesses, as I mentioned, and entrepreneurs and investors build it outside of Wall Street. And I just wanted to repeat that again, because I think a lot of the listeners might have listened to that in the beginning and said, well, <laughs> OK, that what does that mean? Um, so what we do for investors is we try to help them establish an infrastructure to capture and leverage their wealth and at the same time, create a cash flow management system for the personal and business economy. And we actually use a specialized life insurance vehicle to do this. Now, professional investors and some of the wealthy uh, individuals and families, they run their financial lives like businesses and they focus on systems and processes. So life insurance is just another tool like real estate, business, you know, gold and silver paper assets and like stocks and bonds. So you can utilize life insurance vehicles like the wealthy and like professional investors or some of the other products that's that's out there. You know, again, it's the Robert Kiyosaki approach. There's many ways to invest in real estate. Uh, one person can take a property and lose money from it. And then another one can take it and turn it into an income stream. So what we do is we use a chassis of dividend paying whole life insurance with a mutual insurance company and we structure this vehicle based on the infinite banking concept we set this your cash flow management system up this way and the reason we use dividend paying whole life insurance with a mutual company is the insurance vehicle is a private contract between you and the insurance company. It's also liquid, so which is very, very big thing for real estate investors. We always need money for our deals to fund it. We need money to fix up properties. We need money to sustain the property until we get a renter in there. And the other thing is it has a guaranteed principal and earns a guaranteed interest rate. And then as a policyholder, you're in a mutual insurance company, you're also a shareholder. So you get to participate in dividends. Now, this isn't guaranteed, but some of the companies, mutual insurance companies have been around since the mid 1800s. And most of the carriers that we use have paid out dividends for over 100 years consecutively during the Great Depression, during recessions, and even during the last financial crisis. The growth inside this vehicle is also tax-free and money can dis be distributed tax-free through certain strategies that we teach. It also offers asset protection in most states. If the listeners out there, please check with your legal advisor because it differs from state to state. But in this litigious society that we live and that we will continue to live, um, that's a very, very nice thing to have. And then you really can secure some of your assets and the real estate, especially with life insurance vehicle. And because it's a life insurance vehicle, you can also pass on uh, this vehicle to your loved ones at a multiple of the account value tax free to your children or grandchildren. Now, how this vehicle really nicely dovetails with investments such as real estate is you can access your cash value through policy loans from the mutual insurance company. But when you borrow money 
from a mutual insurance company, it's not like borrowing from a qualified plan like an IRA or a 401k. You actually borrow that from the general account from the mutual insurance company. So the loan is on the outside separate between you and the mutual insurance company. And it doesn't affect your cash value or your cash growth in the policy. So what that means is if we hypothetically take $100,000 just to have nice round numbers, mm -hmm. if you have $100,000 in cash value in your policy and you take a loan for $100,000 from the insurance company, that $100,000 in your policy grows consistently, predictably, with certainty, with the guaranteed interest rate and the participation and dividends as if it's never been touched. And you get to use and utilize that $100,000 to invest in real estate or other assets to create more income streams. So what we've seen with clients is they would buy a property using this cash value and then initially the cash flow from the, the policy loan flows back into that plan. So we call it a cash flow management system that's your own, that you control, that's redirecting cash flows into your own economy because all of the money stays inside of your own economy right there by borrowing it, leveraging it with your cash value, and then creating more, more assets out there. Now, one question that I do get is, and this is, a, a, quite frankly, the question that I had initially when I was exposed to this the first time was, oh, wow, but how is this possible? Because, you know, my my principles and the way that I like to do business is I'd like to do do uh, transactions where everybody around the table wins and win-win uh, relationships for everybody around. So how is it how is I can clearly see how I can benefit by leveraging the money that I have in this account um, that's growing with certainty, predictability, and then you leverage it to use and create more assets. How, how does the insurance company win? Well, these guys manage risk <laughs> better than any other business out there. So the, the cash value in your po uh, policy is collateral for the loan as, as, long as, as well as your death benefit. Now, with insurance companies, they get premiums up front, which they then use also and invest in other vehicles to generate an, a return for them. That's why Warren Buffett loves these businesses. He calls insurance businesses some of the best businesses out there and why he buys a lot of them. So they, they clearly are in a win-win situation. You're in a win-win situation um, by being able to leverage some of the, the, your cash value in there to create more, more income streams. So this this would be something that'd be more available for a person who has had a whole life policy for a number of years and has built up that cash value? No. So that's a very good question because insurance vehicles, you can get very creative with it. And there might be some of the listeners listening to this thinking, well, I wouldn't qualify for life insurance. That's not necessarily true. There's a lot of different strategies that we teach where we can fund and pay up these vehicles very, very quickly. Um, we work with investors and clients um, at many different stages of their career and lives. So these are not cookie cutter products. We create them especially for you. We look at your goals, what you would like to achieve. And there's many different uses for this. I'll give you an example. One of my policies I use for one of my properties as a reserve account. So I have the money in there and with real estate, as listeners may know that <laughs> have some properties when it rains, it pours. So within one year, I had to replace a, a dishwasher, a washer and a dryer and make some other improvements. And because I had one of my policies structured as a reserve account, I could access the funds quickly, um, pay for that and then pay it back through the additional cash flows that I could generate for charging more for the rent for the upgrades that I did for that property. The policy loans are also very, very flexible flexible. Um, you can set back your own payback period. Um, so if, if there are some examples, if, some, if there's listeners out there that's interested in, fun, in funding this and getting it funded up, there's a single premium option 
which doesn't necessarily have the tax benefits because we're putting a lump sum in there, but you can leverage your money right away then to participate um, in other investments that create more income streams for you. And then there's also options to fund it for a couple of years and then leverage it and use it and, and fund it. So it's all based on the goals and the objectives of the investor. And then we kind of create it around you. That's one thing that, that I love about this industry and some of the, the, the vehicles that are out there because um, you can get very creative with it. That's great. I didn't realize there was so much flexibility. That's fantastic. Um, well, you know, one of the areas that we uh, talk about uh, a lot here on Old Dogs too is that uh, besides just generating cash flow, we're very interested in being able to to create a legacy, something that we can leave for our children and grandchildren. And uh, how how would you advise those in uh, listening that uh, uh, to be able to do that, utilizing some of these uh, approaches? Yeah, and that that's that's a very fulfilling and wonderful part that that. We at Valve Wealth Financial help individuals and families do as well. Um, there, through some of the strategies that we teach using the infinite banking concept, the same on on dividend paying whole life insurance with a mutual insurance company, um, we individuals can help fund some of their children and grandchildren's college through some of the strategies that we teach. Um, some of these policies can be funded to uh, make funds available for children and grandchildren to purchase a home, to start a business, and just setting aside a, a plan to, to at one stage assign to them um, that they can leverage and use to uh, create income streams of their own. So as far as college planning, it, which is a big part of what we do, the policy is, is private. So when it comes to applying for financial aid, um, that this does not count against you. So uh, the FAFSA does not count that. And someone would say, well, if I have one of these policies, why would I do that? We teach different strategies, how to maximize it and the most efficient way to pay for college, but combining this with, with other resources that are available. We also, in my firm, for example, I've seen clients that have taken out policies on their grandchildren and children and then fund, fund it and eventually hand it off to the parents if it's a grandchild to, uh, po to pass on. Some of the wealthiest families out there have used this, this strategy. The Rockefeller Family Office, for instance, use um, permanent life insurance products in some of the strategies that, that they implement from that family office. And, but I think the most important thing, and this is why this is so important and, and why those families have been so successful, is the dialogue about money that this opens within a family. When you put these plans together, you can talk to your children and your grandchildren and talk about your attitudes and your relationship with money, which is more than what 99% of families are currently doing. Money is, 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 is still a very taboo subject. So if some of the strategies that's in here, if you can explain to them how it works and why it's important and what we what are our goals as a family and what what do we stand for what are some of the principles and values that that we have and again saying you know what is our attitude and relationship as a family towards money it's extremely powerful to open that dialogue and that's what what some of those families have done uh, within their family office, I, I use the Rockefeller family as an example, but that's why every with every generation, they not only su sustain their wealth, but they build their wealth because together as a family, there's a set of values and principles that they share with each other and talk to each other and benchmark. Um, think about talking to children and grandchildren about how you're able to create assets that create income streams and how important that is and how valuable that is. So that I think is a very, very important part of creating a legacy that will be beneficial to your family now and your grandchildren and your children, but also for generations to come moving forward. So some of these strategies that we teach 
you're basically starting to build generational wealth within your family, which is amazing and such an amazing part of what can be achieved through some of these strategies. Yeah, that's great. That's good, good information. Um, well, MC, you know, I'd uh, like our listeners to hear a little bit about, uh, you know, maybe your business and what you're excited about uh, ahead. Uh, you sound like you're growing and moving forward and expanding your business. Can you kind of give us your vision for the future of your company? Yes, we live in extremely exciting times, as I've mentioned, and we also live in a time with a lot of uncertainty. We've seen um, a lot of uh, things in the global economy at play. We've seen um, a lot of the countries that are extremely into debt. So there's a, there's a lot of things that we can look at that we can see is going to have an enormous impact on our life and our ability to create wealth and create income streams. But there are solutions and there's way to not only protect yourself, but position yourself to take adv advantage of a lot of opportunities that's coming ahead. Um, you know, through and I talk about it a lot. I see a lot of problems out there, but I'm also an extremely optimistic person and positive person that I see Un unlimited amounts of of opportunities. So my company is extremely mission driven. This is my purpose. I can kind of see what's happening in the markets. Uh, the the current uh, model of financial planning has failed a lot of people out there. And my my purpose and, and mission is to try and help as many people out there uh, create certainty, security, and predictability in their wealth plan, and then also through uh, the the podcast that I have and the guests that I that I have on, share how they can leverage this financial foundation with certainty and predictability to go and create income streams. So very exciting about that, um, and and just uh, getting out there and and trying to trying to share my message with as many people out there as possible. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, we've come to the portion of our uh, time together where we have a little sort of wrap it up. You can share information about good resources and so forth that our, our folks can use uh, to help help them and their goals, and uh, whether financial or personal. Um, and we call it uh, Wrap It Up. And I'll ask you a series of quick questions, and you can just give me the answers as quick as you can, and then we'll go from there. You ready? Sure. Yes. Uh, all right. Great. Um, what is your favorite cash flow generating book or a book about cash flow generation? I'm going to say The Creature from Jekyll Island. And the reason that I say that is it teaches a lot how the monetary system works um, and how money really works and what money is. And I think once you understand how it works what and, and, and your approach to it, that will enable and empower you to go out and create more income streams. Excellent. How about your favorite business book? The Four Hour Work Week from Tim Ferriss is really amazing, and I've tried to use it as a model for what this information age type of business structure that I, I try to build. Great. How about your most valuable website for success um, other than your own? I love richdad.com. <laughs> they, they have a lot of very powerful resources out there. And uh, no, um, the, obviously, we, as we mentioned, that, that's a book that woke me up, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And they continue to produce enormous value. Um, also a very mission-driven company. Yes, very much. How about favorite app? I love using Dropbox. Yeah, so it's here. just basically uploading it. Um, I can share it very easily. I have uh, partners in different parts of the world that uh, that's part of my business and, and, and some of my vendors. So it's very easy to share content with them on Dropbox. Great. Yeah, and this question is a kind of an interesting one, but uh, it's uh, and I'd like to hear from your perspective is if something catastrophic happened, just say you lost everything except for a thousand dollars in the bank. What would you do with that thousand dollars to try to regain what you had lost? I would try to identify a problem or a pain that that someone wants to solve. I would try a, and create an elegant solution. And I think recording a videos 
or a podcast or just providing value sharing information on YouTube. That's where I would post a lot of things on YouTube, on a podcast, a lot of these resources. Doesn't take a ton to get started. You can shoot videos from your smartphone, which I will use the money for as well. So a part of that would be for the smartphone. And then uh, I would network with as many people as I humanly <laughs> can <laughs> in person or online through communities and groups. Um, and the the groups that I would target to would be people that I would think that has this problem that I could solve for them. And then through networking with them and engaging with them on these Facebook groups and meetup groups, I will try to identify some of the major little bits around that problem. And then I would try to provide value around all of that and share information with them and also use that in creating a product, which I will eventually buy a landing or get a landing page and a shopping cart and try to solve their problem for them that way. Hmm, interesting. Uh, online. Online. That's awesome. Wow. Well, uh, time's kind of zipped by, MC. I, I, I have like 50 more questions I could ask you easily, but uh, <laughs> um, I think I probably have to keep this within the time format that I have. Um, how can people reach you and uh, get a hold of you? I'm sure there's a lot of questions that our listeners have. And what, what's the best way to reach you? My main platform right now is cashflowninja.com. So that's where also where my podcast is, my blog, um, and the listeners can reach out to me there. Uh, Bill, for, for your listeners out there that's interested in learning more about uh, some of the strategies that we that we teach and the infinite banking concept in particular, um, I will ship them a free book uh, of Mr. Nelson Nash, Becoming Your Own Banker. Um, they could just email me at info at cashflowninja.com. That's info at cashflowninja.com just put old dogs in the in the subject matter and uh just to reach out to me and i will ship you ship you a copy wow that's fantastic i've heard so much about this idea uh that uh i think that uh anybody listening to this should take advantage of that that's wonderful thank you very much very generous of you wow well Great. MC, this has been a, a blast, but uh, as you know, it's not over yet. <laughs> okay. No, it's not. This is the old dogs network, and uh, you can't get get away here without giving us your best. Old. Now, this is good. We haven't had a South African howl yet, so uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking for one of those Ridgeback howls here. And uh, That's right. Uh, uh, Rod what is that? Rhodesian Ridgebacks, right? That's uh, right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so uh, we're... Uh, we're going to turn it over to you so you can close us out with your best old uh, uh, Rhodesian <laughs> Ridgeback <laughs> howl. How's that? Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was great. I love it. <laughs> it, sounded, it sounded authentic to me, but uh, maybe there's some uh, other. Uh, we'll see. I'll have to try it out on some uh, Rhodesian Ridgebacks around here and see if they really go for it. <laughs> yeah, I, tr I try to do the deep, the deep howl too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, MC, for, for joining us us and uh, being our guest it's uh, we're really honored to have you Bill thank you so much for having me on the show I it was a wonderful experience and I'd have lost uh, well same here and uh, we are uh, just advising my my listeners here to, to have a listen to your show Cashflow Ninja and I'm sure they can reach you through iTunes and all the, the various avenues as well as your website right that's correct. I'm on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and then, yeah, you can link through all of that through CashflowNinja.com. That'd be great. Well, I also want to thank all you old dog listeners out there for joining us. I know there's a, a lot of other things you could be doing right now, but the fact that you've taken the time to join us means a lot, and we really appreciate it. Well, that's the show for today. Uh, remember, cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. Until next time, keep moving forward and may God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.